and welcome back to Shelf Center. This is Bryce. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for liking and subscribing. If this is something you end up enjoying, you never know, it could happen. This is my top shelf news. That's top shelf news for the week for fantasy, science fiction, sometimes horror, mostly as it relates to books, also as it relates to media. So anyway, let's jump right into it. First things first, people are talking about it, so I'm gonna, you know, put my opinion in where nobody cared to ask for it. Apparently, George R. R. Martin, our uh, author of A Song of Ice and Fire, or Game of Thrones, as you may know, uh, if you are an HBO fan, he's talking Winds of Winter. Uh, as we all know, this book's been delayed for some time now. He says continually that he's still writing. Um, latest, really, before now, the update was he's about three quarters of the way through, as we all know, especially from A Dance with Dragons, which also took its sweet time to come out. That would be book five in the series of seven books, Winds of Winter being book six of the, the series. Um, we're still waiting on it. So if you don't already know, Game of Thrones is written by George R. R. Martin. He came out with the first three pretty quickly in the 90s. Uh, then we had some uh, some wait. Uh, he, he made promises here. Uh, he came out then, I think about five years later, with A Feast for Crows, uh, about 2005, 2006-ish. And that's actually when I got involved. I was thinking that was the, when, when I first read the series, I was thinking A Feast for Crows was the book. It was the final book. Oh, how wrong I was. Oh, sweet summer child Bryce. And I was actually a lifeguard then. And I read it while lifeguarding, not like actively lifeguarding while I was on my breaks, which there were a lot of. Anyway, we've been waiting for some time. It took uh, quite a while. Dance with Dragons came out about the time that the show itself started. We're going, hey, this is going to be great. He'll produce the books. Uh, there's only two more after Dance with Dragons being number five. Uh, and, uh, you know, while the, the show was going... But that was too much. Uh, eight seasons to eight years uh, was too long, apparently. And he still couldn't come out with uh, Winds of Winter, which is the book six. I will say he made promises with uh, Feast for Crows. That was book four. Uh, essentially going, look, I had to separate this in a way that made sense. So I've already written. This was the, the promise made. I can literally show you at the back of my Feast for Crows book right here uh, where he literally goes, look, uh, I had to just separate this between the North people at the North and the people down at the South. Uh, and so anyway, you'll get your book here with Dance with Dragons here soon as was what he, he said in the book. Uh, he regretted it. He's since said how much he's regretted that <laughs> because a lot of people held him to it and he did not clearly, uh, you know, make that happen. So, <laughs> Uh, we had our waiting and we had our grumbling and uh, with extra R's in that grumbling. But anyway, there's a new, I mean, that's all to get to. There's a new update apparently, um, but he was just chatting. He was chatting with Cassandra Clare, another prominent author, as you may or may not know, uh, about all kinds of things. Does address Winds of Winter. I think you almost have to in his spot. Uh, and there's really not much of an update that I got from it. Um, I think... People are acting like it's more than it is. I think Patrick Leo did a good job to be like, I mean, maybe sometime. Uh, apparently he made a comment about this other book, The Rag Picker King, uh, coming out, slated to come out in March of 2025, and that that might actually come out before The Winds of Winter. And he acts like that's not like clearly what's going to happen. I just, that's the thing like that makes me kind of crazy here. It's like, yeah, it's been like a decade, like, Oh, do you think this other book isn't going to come out first? Anyway, all the books, all the things seem to come out first. Wild cards, the left and right, all these things. And I get it. He can do what he wants. I'm just saying it's just like kind of crazy to me to even think that, of course, that like, like that's not going to even happen. Anyway, that's your update, whatever it may be. Uh, last he said was three quarters of the way through. See it when there's an actual date that he's actually announcing, but he's essentially, his update is that he has no more updates to give on the Winds of Winter until it's done. Uh, yeah, so we'll don't expect any updates for like years is what I'm gathering from that. It's mind boggling to me. And again, he's one that can just scrap whole portions of the book, if not the whole book, if he just doesn't like where it's going. So. You're always, uh, like, you're always, like, for me, I'm thinking you're just always at, at zero, right? You never know until it's done. So anyway, 
<laughs> With that fun note, let's move on. Daughter's War is the next from Christopher Buhlman. Uh, this is a prequel to The Black Tongue Thief. Heard nothing but great things. Lots of people excited for The Daughter's War. It looks really cool. Art here by Marie Bergeron. Uh, maybe related to the, the hippie host. All right, then we've got a new Stephen King 12 short story collection. I love his short story collections. You can always just kind of read them whenever you want. You don't have to read all at once, you know, just here and there. I like having short stories. They're just so good. He can pack a punch. He's not, you know, they're, they're not all great either. So, you know, it is what it is. You like it darker, so that's interesting. Uh, anyway, cool cover. May 21st of next year, so not too long. Gosh, he's so consistent. All right, huge news for a friend of the channel. We've got The Black Crown by John A. Douglas. It's got a cover. It's gonna be out very quickly here, November 13th. I've already got my pre-order, so definitely do it. Look at that cover. It's by the same artist as the Hellborn King books, which just looks so good too. Um, just, it's so cool. Look at that dragon. Um, I like that it's a different, like, kind of protagonist. This is going to be cool. Like, I'm I'm excited. Uh, would love to play some D&D &D with John. I'm wondering if, if this is his character. Um, so anyway, congrats to John Douglas. Uh, very exciting. Very cool. Uh, what a time to be alive in self-publishing. I just love it. Then I was just noticing The Olympian Affair is already out by Jim Butcher. Just barely came out this week, so go get it. It's the second book in the Aeronauts Windless series. This is the cover of the Cinder Spires, I guess I should say. Aeronauts Windless is book one. It's excellent. It has a whole race of cats that act like cats, but get a talk, and it's hilarious. So highly recommended. For that, just for that alone, and in Jim Butcher style, his sense of humor is just awesome. So anyway, uh, Olympian Affair, you better believe I'm getting that. All right, next news, pretty big news from Brandon Sanderson, at least I think so. Because it's Stormlight Archive news, this is the latest book that has come out in the Stormlight Archive. Obviously, it was a bit ago. Um, any chance to get a book off a shelf, right? Sanderson just barely came out uh, with an update talking about the latest Stormlight Archive book, book number five, the fifth book that will close the first arc of the series. So there's 10 books total two five book arcs so essentially this will be a conclusion of sorts he says he's 88 percent through the book right now so 80 88 percent done with the first draft that's important it's at 420,000 words which is uh the length of an already huge book um so uh he says he's got essentially another whole book to write left in it but it's actually it's going really well so this is this is the part that's the good update because it just sounds like it's going very well it's we were getting updates for a while there that were uh, it, it was slower moving. It's just, you know, especially, I just feel like you could read through the lines when Sanderson's not like able to just crank out a book. He, he does have a lot to kind of prepare for when he does write a Stormlight Archive book. There's so much lore, so much backstory, everything to kind of just balance there. So much Cosmere to, to be able to fit into it. But anyway, one of my favorite parts is that he said that this, that he wrote his best action scene that he's ever written. Uh, which is saying something, I have to say. I mean, I'm assuming, I mean, obviously in the Stormlight Archive books that I've read, I haven't actually <laughs> read this one, but in the Stormlight Archive books, there's some great action scenes. I mean, arguably of all time. Um, he also wrote like the action scene of the Wheel of Time. So I'm assuming that that also is included when he says best action scene he's ever written. He wrote like, one of the longest chapters ever written, potentially in the last battle, in the final book of the Wheel of Time, Memory of Light. So I don't know, that sounds like great news because that final battle in the Memory of Light is amazing. And again, many, plenty of great battle scenes. I, I really think back to that insane scene in The Way of Kings, still one of my just all time favorite battle scenes at the end there. It's epic, so epic. Anyway, hopefully I'm not spoiling too much, but anyway, great news overall. <laughs> to balance out the update that wasn't really an update, I felt like, from George R. R. Martin. <laughs> All right, then we're jumping into media news. Wanted to jump in with a couple things. Apparently, it's gonna be a Dune Prophecy TV show, fall of 2024. That's about all I have right now. Maybe editing Bryce found some more things, but, uh, 
Could be good. There's a lot of lore, a lot of stuff to go into with Dune. Um, the problem is, is it like, and I'm slowly making my way through the main series. Problem is, I know there's a lot of, of feelings toward, uh, there's Frank Herbert, you know, which is just like, apparently just, you know, they're excellent. I mean, I've read Dune, I've read Dune Messiah now. Um, they're, you know, it's still really good. I didn't love Messiah as much as, as Dune. Dune's just so good, such a classic. Um, but it's, uh, there's just so, and there's kind of like these couple of camps, because clearly the uh, Brian Herbert, the son of Frank Herbert, he's got a whole kinds of, tons of series of uh, just going into kind of a bunch of Dune stories from his dad's notes. Um, there's, it's, it's pretty separated, I think. I mean, it just seems like any fan, I guess, that I read who has an opinion on the internet, uh, is just thinks the worst of Son of Dune stuff, um, with Kevin J. Anderson, who I've actually met in person and is an awesome dude. Um, and, but clearly they sell pretty well and maybe it's just for the fact that it has Herbert on it in some way and it is Dune. Uh, but it seemed they seem to sell pretty well, and they continue to get published over and over again. I will say I've read one of them. It was the Butlerian Jihad, and it was essentially the whole uh, story of why we have Mentats and Bene Gesserit now, because we don't rely on machines anymore, because they tried to Matrix everybody, um, or Skynet everybody, whatever, you know. <laughs> whatever post-apocalyptic you want to go with it, but they attempted that. And it goes through that whole story, and I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I've also heard that that's the best of the, the Brian Herbert books. But that's the only experience I have, and I thought it was good. So I could see where people can have opinions on that, and I'm sure I, am, I just don't have enough uh, backing to be able to back up this opinion. But I can say what I have read has been good. Uh, take that for what it is. <laughs> I'm on the fence as to whether this TV show will be decent or not. Who knows? I guess I'll just have to find out. Um, if it has uh, a Denny uh, involved in any way, then I'm pretty sure it'd be good. But I don't think it does. Then, finally, wanted to talk about there is a Highlander reboot with Henry Cavill. If you haven't watched this, it's like one of those, like, they're not, it's not so bad, it's good. It's just like kind of classic, corny 80s action maybe that's just the best way which i just love i think it's awesome i mean you got sean connery in the first highlander he's awesome and i i was a huge fan as a kid of the highlander tv series and it was just so good best i mean let's let's at least acknowledge it has the best intro song because it had one from queen yeah i don't know why but it's amazing um, but anyway, it's got Henry Cavill as the Highlander, I assume. It's uh, directed by Chad Stahelski, uh, one of the directors of John Wick. So I think we're win-win here so far. Looks like it's moving forward. Uh, I can only be excited for that. I, and there can be only one. There's all, all kinds of you know arguments that there can only be one. But there were multiple movies made. Some don't acknowledge the sequels. I understand that. Uh, I, they're all pretty campy, but I love, anyway, the Highlander, the whole mythos and everything, the lore, as they say nowadays, is pretty cool. Uh, so I'm very excited for it. Can't help. And it's it's Henry Cavill. He's been knocking it out of the park for pretty much anything he gets involved in. So anyway, that's been the news to me. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you next time. Bye.